morning guys and girls. Uh, today we're going to be talking about another species that isn't really covered in most of uh, most of the books because it's generally considered a bycatch, not really something that we target. That is the fishtail barbel. Now, scientific name for the fishtail barbel, there are two, but the one that we're going to deal with is the one that's called the black sea catfish. Now that is Galeichthys atar, atar, atar. So that is, as I said, the black sea catfish, but we call it fishtail barbel up here. It's just, just to distinguish between a previous one that we've done, which is the eel tail, and the fishtail. Now simply, eel tail, tail like an eel, fishtail, tail like a fish. Very, very easy to distinguish between the two. The fishtail barbel, similar to our, our freshwater barbel, barbel, You've got quite a chunky head, nice prominent mouth on the front, little barbels hanging off of that that are used for, for feeding around. He doesn't really have teeth, he's got a little plate in the front and he's also got uh, throat, uh, throat teeth as we can call them, little crushing plates that sit right in the throat that he's actually allowed to, they're called pharyngeal plates, so it sits here by his gills, that can actually crush any of the harder organisms. So that's things like crayfish and things that we'll get to in a bit. Um, overall, catfish type shape. Uh, fairly distinguished fins on the front um, and then that large tail at the back. You've got small eyes, they're not uh, visual, they don't work on, on sight, they're not visual predators. You've got browny, chocolatey brown color on the top and white on the bottom. It's a very, actually a very beautiful fish. Surprisingly for barbel, they're generally not attractive, but um, it's one of those species that is, in my, in my opinion, quite, quite a beautiful fish. As you mentioned, yeah, like this, they've got uh, the sensory organisms on the, on the front and they can actually go along and, and feel through the sediment and uh, use those barbels to work on, on movement and they can actually taste with them as well. Now, in terms of research side of things whatnot, their movement patterns are unknown. We don't really know where they go, what they do, are they moving from A to B, are they you know, migrating, whatnot. We actually don't know about that, so it is a consideration that we need to look into. Um, Generally shallow water species, they like occurring in that sort of rocky rocky areas and um, offshore but not into the deep deep water. Another very important thing when you talk about spines. Now much like the eel tail barbel, the fish tail's also got very very prominent spines. Now I do this just because so it's easy to remember. You've got your pick fins and you've got your dorsal fin. Now they've got, excuse me, I've got quarter goo all over myself. They uh, have got spines on the top on your, your dorsal fin and they've got spine on both pecs on the leading edges. They've got a protein poison that's in there now very similar to well not in the spine but coated on the spine similar to your skates and rays if you ever get that into hot hot water that denatures the protein and actually destroys the poison but you also need to seek medical attention as soon as possible. Now to handle the fish he's got his head like that imagine the mouth is here on the front you want to grab him over the top and you actually feel the, his skull at the back layer, and you want to grab your fingers on there and then your pinky on the bottom and your thumb on the other side on either side of the pec fins. So you've got the spines pointing away from you but if he is to fall or you, you drop him by mistake he's not going to fall onto you, he's going to fall away from you. So yeah, it's one of the considerations, be very careful. As I said there are no teeth so you don't have to worry about him biting you or anything like that. So you can also lip them but I often find with lipping, then he shakes like that and you can sometimes get the spines into you. But anyway, very careful about that. Uh, and if you do get spiked, seek medical attention as soon as you can. But hot, hot water is going to be your best bet at an immediate cure because it is extremely painful. As we mentioned, bottom dwelling, their mouth is slightly turned down. So that's for feeding on the bottom. They are mainly, as we mentioned right at the beginning, a bycatch. They're going to feed on pretty much anything on the bottom. So your bivalves, your crustaceans, when we say bivalves, a valve shell, bivalves, so clams, mussels, anything with two shells that open up like that. Um, they've been recorded up to about over 15 years of age and a fish under two kilos. So I think 1.3 or so is the maximum recorded age, but that was calculated from length to weight things. So obviously it can be a little bit more, a little bit less. Now, an interesting part about the species is we got off of Port Alfred, the um, ski boat line fishery catches off Port Alfred, they actually make up 30% of their, their catches. So 
we're talking about an extreme, I mean, that's a, a, a almost, well, one third of their catch is actually coming to fishtail barbel. So it's a species that as your more dominant lionfish uh, species get taken out, so your reds and things like that, it's going to be a species that really needs to fill in that gap. Now, they are very good eating, um, fairly fast growing, and um, you do get quite a lot of meat off of one fish. So it's, it's a species that is possibly, in the future at least, is going to fill in that, uh, a lot of the gaps that are being taken out by other species that are being overexploited. So it's a species we need to look after. We need to just monitor those catches and make sure that it doesn't get overexploited as well and taken out. So yeah, fishtail barbel. Um, catching wise, you're looking at, they love your, your crustacean baits. So crayfish is a big plus for them and your chocker and pretty much anything, but I found chocker, hockey, and then your your prawn and crayfish is gonna be sort of the ultimate baits for them. It's similar to your eel tail barbel. And then obviously rocky, rocky areas, deeper water sections, really the place to be. So yeah, fishtail barbel. Cheers.